tighten you guys ready? Thank you, the Environmental Matters Committee meeting for June 20th is called to order. For the record, all the members are in attendance. I'd like to come to the committee to talk about this problem. All right, so first on the agenda we have approval of the minutes. I don't see an attachment. So I had it. I, I read them. I would move approval of the minutes. Oh, here they are. Okay. <laughs> I'll um, entertain a motion. I, I move to approval of the minutes. Okay. I second to approve the meeting minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next on the agenda, we have legislation before the committee. First up is 0818 Public Services, Title 16 Code Amendments. And um, I, we give the floor to the city manager. I believe she has some updates on this. Hi, Teresa Sutherland, city manager. Um, Ordinance 1818 is going to be withdrawn. It is not necessary in any way, shape, or form to have this ordinance. The code already says that. Uh, prior to June 30th of each year, the city shall complete a cost of service rate study and report the results to the council, which we've done. If the rate study indicates that increase of rate is necessary to cover the cost and that increase is less than 5%, the rate increase will automatically occur and no council action will be required. Same language in the sewer part of the code, the rate increase in fiscal year 19 is 2.5% on both water and sewer. So this ordinance is unnecessary and it will be withdrawn. Wonderful. Great. Withdrawals and delays are our best thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sutherland. All right, next up on the agenda, we have 02218 Food Handling Establishments Polystyrene Food Service Products Prohibition. And um, let's see. For this ordinance, to give the uh, committee some background, thank you. So, well, first of all, to give the committee some background, the underlying ordinance was modeled. Uh, we sat down with the county attorney and um, county councilman Trumbar, and we put together the original ordinance and gave that to the law office. And uh, Ms. Lee put together the first draft, which the final draft, which was posted online. And there is one correction. I need to propose, but anyway, that's the yeah. background in general. So it's, um, we spoke with, um, I spoke with County Councilman Trumbar and the plan is to have this enforced by the County's Health Department because um, they are already in our restaurants enforcing county code, um, health code. So this will be, they'll be able to enforce this at the same time. Um, so that essentially would be no cost to the city. And um, so what this does is prohibit the use uh, of the EPS, the um, polystyrene foam um, in local restaurants and even in um, grocery stores. I think what else to summarize here. And we had um, some extensive public comments at the last meeting, uh, at the public hearing. So my colleagues have any questions about the underlying ordinance? We do have some people here from law office, office of environmental policy, 
also the Trash Free Maryland and the Annapolis Environmental Commission who are available for questions. So the my understanding is the County Council passed this five to four, and, but yeah. were there changes they to, made that would affect us? Yeah, my understanding, they made two changes. One was to uh, adjust the, reduce the fines, and the other was to um, um, extend the application date applicable. They extended it to, let me check here, to um, 2020. I believe, uh, Ms. Butler, do you have a report on those amendments? Yes, it's uh, the effective date. Can you, could you uh, speak into the mic? But if they've made those changes and this is being enforced by the county, we don't really have much of a choice but to follow those changes, right? Yeah, we might as well make those changes. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and Ms. Butler, do you have the details on those amendments? Right. Hi, I'm Diane Butler, Annapolis Environmental Commission. Uh, yes, the County Council did uh, change the effective date to January 1st, 2020, and we would recommend that the city do the same to match the county's bill. Yep. All right. So we have our Office of Law here. I think they have some things to tell us about that. Uh, Ms. Butler, what was the other amendment? Um, it had to do, so how are the fines changed? Uh, well, the fines have been changed to a Class E offense, so $50 for the first violation, $100 for the second violation, and $500 for uh, the third violation and all subsequent violations. And I believe, oh, Alderman Arnett, you may be able to answer this question, um, I b and possibly the Office of Law, too, but I believe, um, since this will be a... Since this is enforced by the health department, I'm guessing they're going to be using the county fines or our own fine schedule. I, I would defer to the office of law. Okay. I think I think they're ready to. They're here to tell us about that. And I see there is a. You have uh, some things that you're raising that we need to be thinking about, and then some proposed amendments. So I would. Okay. I, I, they're much more expert on this than I am. Yeah, I just want I just want to add I I look forward to hearing this because one would ask, okay, um, having a food establishment myself in a way, I have a bed and breakfast that I get inspected by the county. And I'm always concerned about the disconnect between our code and the county code. I mean, I know when I have to look at the county code versus the city code. So one would this begs the question, why do we need it in our code? We probably don't. I'm sorry. So I'll let you talk and explain what you found and your expert advice. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I'll give the floor to the city attorney office. But I do want to say, if you'd get these to us ahead of time next time so we can have a chance to review. Not that I don't want it in the code. I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Alderwoman Tierney, for that lead in. Um, I want to begin by saying that the Office of Law applauds this proposed legislation from a substantive standpoint and um, is not going to offer any suggestions on changing what the Anne Arundel County uh, Council has decided in terms of what needs to be in the law and um, really goes back to um, sort of the City of Annapolis Simplification Act is, is, is because what we're dealing with here is, and I use that term loosely because um, what we're doing here is borrowing from whatever the language is now or might be from time to time in the Anne Arundel County Code. And the Anne Arundel County Health Officer is specifically required to enforce this law, not anybody from the city of Annapolis. And we want to make sure that from an uh, efficiency and uh, resource standpoint that we're not in the, in the business of having to every time the Anne Arundel County City Council decides to change their law, we have to you know, run up and find out, oh, what's the next change? What's the next change? An example being a change that was just mentioned uh, a minute ago in terms of an effective date or, you know, whatever the different change might be, that is the law that will be enforced and that is the law that will be enforced by the county health officer. So having said all that, the only suggestion that this office has to bring is to modify that which purports to be a, a law that is separate and independent from anything else and make it clear that what we are doing is adopting that which is already in the Anne Arundel County Code uh, and applying it to the city of Annapolis 
and the same enforcement mechanisms and requirements that are in place in Anne Arundel County, including the requirement for the Anne Arundel County um, Health Officer to be the enforcement agency. Uh, that is the amendment that we are seeking so that the provision would read, um, as, as it's suggested in O-2218, uh, in the amendment, uh, in, in the document that was recently handed to you, essentially the provisions of the Anne Arundel County Code, section 11-6-103, as the same from time to time may be amended, are applicable and effective within the city and shall be administered and enforced by the health officer. So it's clear that what we are doing is codifying that which is codified in the Anne Arundel County Code, that the county health officer enforces this, and that we don't have to run around with like chickens with our heads cut off looking around to see whenever the Anne Arundel County City Council might be changing the, uh, their law, because whatever change they make to their law will apply in our law as they amend it. That's probably the most simple way I can describe that makes, it. That makes great sense to me, but let me, I heard something I thought I would never hear before in my entire life. The City of Annapolis Simplification Act? <laughs> <laughs> and I use that I, term I want to read that. Where do I find <laughs> it? <laughs> is it, is it? It's not in our code. Is it in the state code? I, I'm just, I, I use that as oh, a, oh, as oh, a oh, fictitious oh, oh. sort of. I was going to read that. I, colloquialism to, to, to <laughs> describe the manner in which we proceed before you, that we are not seeking to change the intent of what you're seeking to do, but instead to simplify it by bringing the, the code to, uh, to, to indicate that from which it derives, and that is the... It's not yeah. nice to fool all their purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mother Nature. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So. What's really fascinating about your proposal is almost uh, the double jeopardy, if you will, because if, if we adopted this as written without amended, then we wouldn't, the, the health inspector would not be responsible for inspecting within the city limits. And well, we can't it, adopt it. But now, and the, with your amendment, now he's responsible, it, it goes back to that. It makes it, yeah. it, it makes it more clear that in fact, we're talking about the health officer of the of Anne Arundel County enforcing in the city of Annapolis and enforcing the same law that it, that that health officer enforces in Anne Arundel County so it simplifies things for uh, for purposes of having um, the language in the code and folks will know better what they are what, what they are um, what the code addresses and and what they must comply with so, Mr. Chair, at some point we'll need to move these, but I don't know whether there's other people here that, uh, whether this would change their proposed testimony or not, but uh, yeah. uh, I, I certainly am prepared to move that we accept the three amendments from the Office of Law as um, amendments to the, uh, what is this, this is an ordinance, right? Ordinance, yes, Ordinance 2218. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether other information. I mean, well, I'll it, move that, and if it's seconded, then we still can well, take. Is it. there any I, comment I, I, from I, those in the public on this proposed amendment? I, I will say that it's not. It doesn't make any substantive right. changes to that which has been offered in the past. It simply uh, cleans up the manner in which it's presented. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking it through here. Um, I mean, it, it takes out pretty much the entire <laughs> text of the ordinance. Um, so it, it adopts the exact language yeah. that was presented earlier, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question, Mr. Chair. How how does it adopt the county language? It it, it indicates that the, these are the same exact provisions that are stated in the Anne Arundel County Code at section 11-6-103. Yeah. So since you're saying the public, the, sorry, the, the county health officer can't be enforcing city laws the, within? The city code, well, well you know, we, we, we get into a question of, unless the county code specifically provides for the city health, uh, for the county health officer to enforce that legislation in the city, 
the, si the city doesn't have the authority to direct to the county what, this, what, what the county health officer does, but by state law, it the state law requires that the uh, county health officer enforce the law uh, throughout Anne Arundel County. So the county code um, complies with that, and our provision mirrors or refers to and indicates that the same language as, as presently exists and is amended from time to time by Anne Arundel County will be the city law with respect to that enforcement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every, everything okay. gets stricken in the, the what's seen now uh, provisions of this section shall be administered and enforced by section blah blah blah. And uh, does that, so uh, in our code section 10, 12, 161 would just have a paragraph underneath it that is this now section C. No. It, it, so it would be sex, it would be A county provisions adopted and it would have that, it would have that language. And, yeah, that's the it only 10, language. 12, 160 food handling establishments. Uh, it would be under that provision. So amendment two would be the only right. thing that appears. The A county provisions adopted. Yeah, amendment two would sub delete everything from line 40, which is section A, through. That's right. Two, three, amendment six, number two, yeah. which goes all the way through section B, and leave section C, which is the reference to the county and the statement that it will be enforced by the county. No, it's through line 26. Pardon me? Which is section C, page two. Right, line yes, two. right, that's what right. I'm saying. That's what I understood. Yeah. And then the other recommendation you make is down on line 37, which is the implementation date, which we now adjust the January date from the county. And ironically, that is because that's what Anne Arundel County did. And in order for us to continue to be in compliance with uh, with the law of Anne Arundel County, uh, we would need to make that that type of change every time Anne Arundel County makes that type of change without the proposal that we bring to you today. Okay. So I have a question. Uh, I mean, you're right. This is the substance is the same. It really addresses the enforcement, and it doesn't then um, you're cross referencing, if you will, the county code and administratively it'd be crazy to keep trying to keep up with it so my question is is if the county amends it for some reason i don't know maybe they they do something with it that we don't agree with how do you how do you monitor that i, I know do, do, we don't have authority uh, to to enforce this law absent Anne Arundel county having a law and a health and, yeah. and, and a law that allows for their health and uh, sure. their health officer yeah. to enforce that law so uh, we, if that should ever happen, we would have to explore whether, uh, if, if they decided to pull out of the city of Annapolis for some reason, yeah, if state yeah. law permits them to, which right now it doesn't, then we would have to re-explore and determine, um, you know, if the city needs to have a law that covers that area. But right now, right now, it's it's essentially preempted by uh, the county law. Yeah. So okay. when we approve this, um, do you think it would be? First, um, you know, with the staff report and everything, should we have a copy of the county code attached to it? In yeah, the, we don't read in code. the flow. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I didn't even just well, heard. Mr. I think the Mr. language Melnick that does have. I mean, you um, reference yeah, it and all that. Is that yeah. okay? Just, yeah. just, just to it's be there. studious. I don't know if anybody needed to see yeah. the county okay. code if we don't. So, thank you, Mr. Mallory. Anything else on this proposal on this amendment? It's my understanding that's all that we have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else? The public have any comment on that particular amendment? Okay. All right. Um, just a question. Yeah. Well, I guess let's let's take care of the amendment, and, and then I have another question. I'll entertain a motion. I, I move the uh, the Environmental Matters Committee recommend to the City Council the amendments one through three that we receive from the Office of Law. I second that a motion that we accept these amendments one through three. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I wanted to ask Director Giles about the uh, uh, Section 2, the 180 days to start um, beginning a public education process. I guess a two-part question, what do we see as the public education? Uh, I guess it, I feel it's more like the uh, restaurateur education, but do you, do you need 180 days, one, and two? Do you have the wherewithal, 
given Monday night. Do you have the wherewithal in your budget to do this uh, outreach? I don't think it's going to take a lot of funds to do the public outreach on it because, as you said, most of it's going to be geared to the restaurants, and we can do that pretty in a very cost effective manner. However, there is a public education component to the community, that part of it, because you want people to understand. Well, the, the, the restaurants say they may have to increase prices, and there's debate about how much that would be. I don't think it's very much at all. Um, you know, there's talk, it's either six to eight cents per container, and some say it's 15 cents. I really think that's just, you know, the people, the opponents say 15 cents because you're talking about a larger container. You're talking about the square ones, maybe at that point. Right. Um, but the public education part of it is that I think is just telling that we've passed this law. There may or may not be increases to when you purchase a beverage or take out, and this is and why it's good for the aquatic environment and public health. It'll be pretty, I think it'll be a very cost effective and very, you know, short time type right. of, and it, it's 180 days, it's 100, 180 days from when? I didn't Passage see, of the legislation. A passage, I thought so. Um, can we do it in that time? I don't see why we couldn't. Okay. It's pretty well, simple. If I could interject, I know also that the Trash Free Maryland yeah. and the Environmental, Annapolis Environmental Commission uh, and I believe Green, Annapolis Green, uh, Annapolis Green mm -hmm. have um, both volunteered to offer their resources, um, correct, and education. Mm -hmm. And they already have some educational materials. I mean, a lot of the, the language we would use, we, we would lift from their materials, which are very nicely put together. With. And <laughs> the Sierra Club, too, I believe, is offered to help. Yes, um, Sierra Club, so, Maryland. Um, mm -hmm. As education for me, um, are restaurants the biggest problem or are grocery stores and drug stores? I mean, styrofoam is still being sold there and consumed at home and on mm -hmm. picnics and right. on the bay. Um, I think Trash Free Maryland has better statistics than I have, um, but it's, it's both. You know, we have a fair amount. You look at like Whole Foods situation with the salad bar. I mean, at Whole Foods is already using um, paper anyway, so they're not a good example, but there are other, um, like Safeway and Giant, everybody has salad bars. They mostly use plastic, though. So um, I think it's mostly coming from restaurants. They can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And it's, But you see less and less of that now. And so when opponents talk about the cost of it, you don't see a lot of restaurants using them beyond cups. You see more going already towards paper or plastic. And they're carry if you ask the, for a doggy bag or something to carry out, it's not it's not foam as much where we do see it a lot is in public schools the trays are made out of mm. styrofoam all right let's go after them next <laughs> they're on the county uh, yeah. the, the outreach will be bilingual i hope yes it Good. has to be okay yes okay so it'll be english and chinese <laughs> russian <laughs> all right any other questions about this ordinance? Do we, we recommended the um, amendments. Do we need a motion to recommend the ordinance as amended? Yes. So I would make that motion to recommend to the council approval of 022.18 as amended uh, by the Office of Law. I second the motion that be amended, I mean, inclusive of the amendment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And by incorporation, we're also including the Annapolis Simplification Act, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, Mr. Melnick, Ms. Kyle, Ms. Lee. Okay. All right, next on the agenda, we have, and, oh, and thank you, everybody in the audience, for coming and for your support. Next on the agenda, we have R2218, Watershed Restoration Fund. And just to give some background on this resolution, although, I mean, you both are co-sponsors, so we probably don't need it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and the intention is to, as you are well aware, especially Alderman Arnett, the historic in history, um, recent past, the stormwater fee has not been used very responsibly by the city. Um, some mayors have used it to try to balance the budget 
Um, and uh, others have used it almost entirely on just paying staff and maintenance costs. And um, you know, I've heard from the public over the years that there is an intention for this to be spent more on projects and actual restoration projects. So this resolution is just an effort to reaffirm and reiterate the, the language that is in the Watershed Restoration Fund, but also to reaffirm our commitment to meeting our water quality targets. Mr. Chair, um, <clears throat> this morning there we had an um, excellent presentation from the group that does the water and sewer rate setting, but they also have the beginnings of a report on s how we're setting the stormwater restoration fee. And um, it wasn't ready for prime time, but I suggested to the gentleman who was really quite good, I can show you a copy of the report he gave on water and sewer, that we have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee and the Environmental Matters Committee to get that report on the stormwater restoration fee. He has uh, a very large amount of data, including looking at who is responsible for runoff by all kinds of breakouts, mm -hmm. including the capital grounds yeah. uh, and things like that. And there are different mechanisms that can be used to set the rates, and he has a suggestion. But um, also, um, the way the, the fees, it could be paid as fees, it could be bond funded. There are other, other mechanisms, and he has a model that will allow us, as you may remember, I favor doing this through fees rather than through bond funding because we need bonds for other things. Um, and he has a whole model that will allow us to play back and forth all these different sources and also to incorporate external grant funding and things like that. So I would uh, strongly recommend that we uh, have Takiya uh, figure out when we can, uh, he doesn't quite have his presentation ready, but ha have a joint meeting, um, and it could be a, not on the regular schedule kind of a meeting, it could be a special meeting, with but the, I the was, committee? joint meeting with uh, economic matters, uh, matters, environmental matters, and the finance committee. Yeah. Uh, I was really wowed by the level of detail that he has, uh, and who's, uh, he's got square footages for the amount of runoff, uh, broken wow. down by apartments, condominiums, uh, all kinds of different sizes of business. It's strongly modeled after the, the county GIS work, which I admire. I thought mm -hmm. they did a really good job until they watered it down too much. But uh, yeah. uh, so anyway, uh, I think it's very exciting. And I think he could be ready pretty quickly. Uh, Melissa Lehman from the um, finance department can, uh, or the city manager can put us in contact with him. And he thought that he could be ready pretty quickly to show that to us. Is this, is he with a firm? Yeah. Um, is it the one that the, the city hired? Uh, yes. Put out the RFP? Uh, yeah. Stand, okay. Where did that go? So, um, Ross? Here it is. Um, it is. Santec, and this is what he presented to us for water and sewer. The presentation for stormwater would be quite different, but um, I think very robust. So will this uh, help uh, us, um, will this help explain, um, I'm a little bit confused about the, the, the dialogue about the enterprise fund and money would that keep with you what I'm trying to ask? <laughs> this talk, so like, yeah. we have the different sources of funding in yes. the enterprise fund, so yes. there's bond funding, yes. there's grant funding, and there's other, yes. uh, there's fee, and then there's other. Yes. So this would be in the enterprise yes. fund, okay. but it would be how we set the rate, and he actually has a proposal. Right now we have fixed rate setting that has to do with the size of the yeah. property in three bands and the businesses all pay the same amount and he has a model that basically takes the average residential unit um, uh, surface 
and sets a rate for that and then you go to an apartment building and you rate how many residential units that apartment building would equate to in terms of its surface and then you would do a multiple of what we're doing for households and the same thing for condominiums the same things for churches schools the whole nine yards um, it, it seems to be a very thought out model and it is strongly based on the uh, underpinnings, the GIS underpinnings of the county model. So uh, I thought it was pretty exciting. Yeah. I thought of you two immediately. <laughs> Maybe we can schedule a presentation. Yeah. Two nerds here. So <laughs> that's okay. All right. Good. So in terms of the resolution, I would recommend, uh, I would make a motion to recommend favorable approval to the council. I think it's always good to keep reminding ourselves of the things that we said we were going to do and we need to continue to um, make sure we're doing them. Yeah. Although I think in, in light of um, Monday night or morning. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday morning. We're, we are going to have to tweak uh, the language of this um, the watershed fund at some point. Right. Yeah, that, that's my um, my question is, is who is the the gatekeeper of this? Who is the gatekeeper that says, yeah, this is a good use, this is correct? Well, that's a very interesting question. But in my view, it's now the direct. Well, it'll be the city manager, but the person who would be doing it is for the city manager would be the director of environmental policy. But it had to be done in conjunction with the finance department because they're the keeper of the funds. And hopefully we would be getting input from all of the different environmental groups around yeah. town. Well, I, I think Ms. Sutherland has expressed uh, some concern about that she's not sure she can authorize actual use of the funds until the language has changed. Um, yeah. So I think we'll have to, yep. that's a, a kind of another a different topic. Um, so, is there a more, this is subject to more edits then? Or no, because we can't. This is just the resolution. If we want to actually change the language, you oh. have to make it an ordinance. Right. Gotcha. Um, to be an okay. actual code change. All right. So, there's no amendments here to. So, I you? made a motion. Oh. I don't know. Is there a motion finish? on the floor? Okay. Uh, to, to recommend approval of this re resolution to the council. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next up is R2318. This is a uh, Creek Restoration Partnership. And for the record, I'd like to remove one of the attachments. It's called R2318 Creek Cabinet Mission Doc. This was, uh, it's a separate but related issue. Um, it's uh, not directly related to this resolution. So to focus on R2318, Creek Restoration Partnership Resolution. Again, uh, the intention is to, yeah, I'm sure we've all heard uh, concerns from uh, the public about our permitting process and approval process. So I've heard the same thing from our restoration community. And this resolution is simply to show our intention to work with the nonprofits. And these nonprofits are the ones who are doing most of our restoration work at this point, almost all of our restoration work and the city. So we need them. Um, and I think we also need to do what we can to facilitate the projects that are getting introduced um, and proposed in the city. So you'll see here, I'm oh, sorry, I'm looking through. Oh, actually, I, yeah, there's actually a bit of, um, I didn't realize the Creek cabinet is, re is referenced in here. All right, I may just, um, I may just withdraw this. I thought that's what we were I, I, Yeah, I think, I, I think at least um, more time to consider it. Okay. Um, I, I, the guts of it are really on page two, line 34. Yeah where the city commits to a goal of streamlining its laws, permit, project review, inspection, procedures to facilitate restoration project approval, completion, da-da-da-da. 
I fully subscribe to all of that, but mm -hmm. I don't want to be limited to creeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we should be doing that across the board. Yeah. So um, I think this might want to have a little more consideration with the director. Um, so I would, I would recommend that uh, we take a little more time. I think it's a very important initiative. I uh, appreciate you and the mayor uh, getting this going. I'm happy to be a, a um, co-sponsor of it, but mm -hmm. maybe we should just take another look. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I concur. So, uh, Alderwoman Terry, do you have any thoughts? On I, that? Know, I was just um, Elvia. Can I talk to her <laughs> when we did <laughs> yeah. when we did the? Um, Come on down. Come on down. I'm just thinking of the name and. Uh, did we have, when we did the funding thing last week, what was that called? Was that called, remember we had everybody there, it's sort of the, just, I'm still toying with the fact that I think it, I'm not one to say, I'm just suggesting that maybe a, 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 a better name than just Creek Restoration, I think mm -hmm. that's all. Uh, what you're talking about is the Green Give. Yeah. And that involves the smaller organizations yeah. um, that are working in restoration. So notably, it did not involve the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, which, and the reason that they were not, and they do restoration too, but I mean, they were not involved because they work outside of Anne Arundel County as well. So the 12 groups that were represented in the Green Give were all people who work primarily or only in Anne Arundel County. Um, but what was interesting about that is that it wasn't just stream restoration people, it was also land trust, it was trail oh. maintenance, it was, yeah. you know, advocacy, it was all across okay. the board. So it, what it's you're talking about is a name. Yeah, right? I am, I am, and I didn't know, it just, oh, it, do we have to state your name, both of you oh. in the record? Yeah. So state your name. Elvia Thompson, the address too, no? Uh, president of Annapolis Green. Um, so you asked me earlier about mm -hmm. the, um, name for it to capture all of it. So the idea, initial idea was that we were trying to capture the creeks and some of the creeks are not represented by some of the not-for-profits like, such as Weems Creek and College Creek and the other groups like Spot Creek Conservancy and Back Creek Conservancy don't want to take on their work. They have been represented in some part by the Seven River Association, the Seven River Keeper because they are creeks that come off of those rivers. But they're not always, the people that live there in those communities don't feel like they are receiving the same attention as those on the actual river. So perhaps the name does need to be changed. You know, so they were thinking about it, I don't know if it should be the Annapolis Waterways Cabinet, um, because that captures not only the river, but the creeks and the harbor as well. Um, the harbor is always the one that is kind of like the stepchild that's left behind when we start talking about waterways. But also you asked me about whether it's just waters. It's not just waterways. You can't talk about the rivers and the creeks without looking at the watershed and subwatersheds. It's just disingenuous to look at it any other way because of stormwater runoff. You look at the forest. You could, that's why the land conservancies are a part of this group because the forests and the open lands play such a part in absorption and filtration of storm water and other pollutants. So I would say maybe watershed. Yeah, maybe. Well, in you the name. Yeah, we could, we should think about it a little bit more, but um, yeah, maybe watershed. When we think about waterways, we, we, us in the environmental community, we always start to think of the watershed anyway, but that's not the way that the public or the layman would think of it, I think. Yeah. And just because it has a particular name doesn't mean it has to be limited to whatever it is, even if you just yeah. kept creek, you know. Yeah, yeah and, and the idea of the creek cabinet was kind of a separate idea from this, uh, like I said, this resolution. This resolution was mostly focused on wanting to try to improve our processes, city processes. The creek cabinet has a much more broader agenda and was modeled after the uh, Chesapeake Bay cabinet that was set up under O'Malley. I personally think that's a great idea. You know, when you, when you have people with different views around the table with different expertise, it can only get better. We're, yeah. we're better together. Yeah. So if I'm going to recommend um, that we not take any action on this resolution, and then I will withdraw it okay. next meeting. Okay. Again, that's our best thing. Do I, it makes um, our meeting shorter on was the Was that a motion? Yeah. Was that no, he's just a direct motion. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll entertain a motion. 
Do I have to bring motion to not take any action? I don't think so. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. Well, then that ends that part of the agenda. So the only thing that's left is um, if Ms. Giles would like to say anything else for the good of the order or, and then the Environmental Commission. So as far as um, I've been on board for one month now, and thank you everyone for helping me and supporting me so much and getting me up to speed, and especially Racine Hodo is here with me, and she has been an incredible support. Thank you, Racine. Yes. <laughs> and um, so she's been training me, in other words. Um, so, but we have a number of initiatives, just so that you know that we're working on. The no discharge zone application is expected any day. Um, Back Creek Conservancy is tweaking it just a little bit more before they give it to me, and then we will, uh, I will review it, and then we will go to the submit submission, pro submission process. Um, we are looking at the Greenway. We're, we're looking at uh, with Sean Wampler what we have in our database to make sure that we have all of our easements for the Greenway and tree canopy in the system so that we can identify what next we need to do. Um, as far as establishing an Annapolis Greenway, so it would all so that you could actually hike or bike um, all throughout the city, whether it's an easement, a small easement that opens up into parkland or otherwise. And um, then we will talk more about the Creeks Cabinet and get that going. However, we decide to do that. And um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, we have MS4. Um, reporting to do to get us into compliance with our MS4 permit and for our 2018 reporting. And we have, uh, we were just awarded a grant for a, a Green Streets grant. We will find out how much that is, but um, it works nicely with the fact that the repaving of Main Street has been put off for another year because now we can incorporate the monies that we in the project to identify projects that could be incorporated into Main Street, such as Silva Cells which allow absorption into the ground and does not run off off our street um, as part of that process when we redo Main Street. When we, Excellent. When we, when we do use it. When, we yes. Can yeah, we can coordinate yeah. the monies that we were getting through this grant because it's all about greening streets. Mm -hmm. So we can, um, we thought that we might only be able to do one silver cell project. We may be able to do more or other projects in connection with that. It just depends how much money we get. We, we will find out very, very soon. You get the notice that you have been awarded a grant, but not, they didn't tell us the amount, and we can't make any announcement about it till June 28th. Who is the grant from? It's um, the Bay Trust, as well okay. as DNR and EPA combination. Okay. Mr. Chair. That would be great. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. That's all the ones, all right. I have a question. So, um, a question that I have long had in the back of my mind and I think is appropriate for uh, your position because of its cross cutting nature is um, I've kind of lost sight of what the meaning of critical area is. It seems like anything can happen in critical areas and does with regularity and I think I look to the third floor of the Gorman building for a lot of why that just goes on. And I'm hoping, particularly since you're reporting to the city manager, that uh, you will be able to um, have a much stronger role. <laughs> and, and I certainly would be interested in hearing from you what your view of critical areas are and how we should be maintaining them. Right. Uh, oh. I, I believe that the critical area, I agree with you, is uh, it seems like every variance gets granted in the critical area right now. Um, that needs to have a more critical eye applied to it. Um, and I hope I can have a bigger role in that. I've already started to talk to Pete Gutwald about stormwater controls and to David Gerald about um, perhaps the need to make them more robust since we had so many violations even when um, the permittee is doing what the state law requires um, and further conversations are needed about critical area and how those variances are being granted and you know whether what kind of criteria is being used to make those decisions so I agree with you thank and you you're I, welcome let me know when you need any help on that. okay I will I have a question. I can't use this excuse much longer, but I'm relatively new. And um, has the coordination 
between you, your office, and the port wardens because I see from their public notices they have a lot going on on our on our um, water access property. Mm -hmm. Anything from in critical, areas. in critical areas, I might add, you know, whether they're um, floating docks or whatever. So, how how does that coordination and uh, communication? How, how do you get in the loop with them? <laughs> That's a really good question that I need to figure out. Racine, do you have any comments on that? On port wardens? No, I don't think there's been a lot. I, honestly, I don't think there's been a lot of coordination period. So that's, I just put it down as on my list to look into. I'll report back to you on that. Okay. And of course, the Maritime Advisory Board, because right. they're so important in the no discharge zones. Right. Oh, we'll definitely have to bring them into that process. Anything else? That's it. Well, um, just. Um, in the future, I think it might be good at some point to get a, more information on how you may plan on using details on the no discharge zone um, allocations that were given to the department once you develop a plan for that. A plan for, for how to use the no discharge zone education materials. Oh, education materials, yeah. yes. Um, so on that, I believe Mr. Barker is still working on that report. I called him last um, week and he um, he said it should be any day. Yeah. And that was last week. So okay. I think he's just tweaking it a little bit. He had some new information from EPA that he wanted to incorporate. And um, I don't know if he's adding the part about being eligible for TMDL credit into it, but they had some really nice mapping and data they pulled recently and he wanted to incorporate it to make it a stronger case. Mm -hmm. So in the discussions of this, uh, I s sit on the Maritime Advisory Board. Um, it seems like our primary tool is going to be the Harbor Master because uh, they're the primary contact. Um, that the Maritime Advisory Board is less than enthusiastic about the no discharge zone is not a secret. Um, but I do think Beth is a pretty strong Harbor Master. Um, I think, again, your, any support you need from us to support her in doing what she needs to do, you can certainly call on me uh, because that is the guts of our zero discharge. Right. So. And uh, Beth is most concerned about the enforcement part of it. I think that's where her concern stems primarily. And we assured her that we would do the education component because, as we were told by the Harbor Masters from Newport, and um, Massachusetts that education was 80% of, of enforcement. Right. So that's, it's a crucial part of it. And she felt, you could see the relief on her face when we talked to her about making sure that we did that part of it. Now there is um, a controversy among some of my constituents uh, who are very upset about liveaboards who are not occasional visitors uh, mm -hmm. who are there, some of them are well-known artists in our community and very much loved. Uh, so I think that that is something where um, zero discharge is more than just a passive educational thing. I mean, that's, that's something that can be monitored uh, and we need to figure out where the comfort level is and, yeah. and whether there's Title 15 uh, changes that need to be made. That's a really good point. We may need to do something directed directly to them mm -hmm. and might be some direct outreach that's needed beyond just materials. We might have to do um, have to meet with some of the level boards or at least go to the marinas and talk to the marina operators right. about um, making some more, I, mean, I might have to set up a meeting with them or just coordinate with them on how we're going to educate them and make sure they're in compliance. Yeah, the marinas will be able to identify. I'm thinking about across from yeah. one of my slips, uh, there's a couple of houseboats, and there are clearly people who live there all the time, year round, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, one of the marinas has won a, a green or clean marina award, and yet there's people living in there, and I don't know, I don't know how that's monitored, but that's fairly easy to identify who those liveaboards are, marina by marina, and, 
and certainly easy to check with the marina operators about how they get their pump out. There's also a company that sells houseboats that's over on 2nd Street, okay. and um, they are renting their houseboats. Uh, and uh, again, there's a lot of documentation from the harbor master about whether or not they get pump outs, but when they do, boy, do they ever. And uh, so again, another, th this has all kinds of tentacles. Right, that, those are excellent points. I have notes on that. Um, I was surprised when I started to inquire about how many people actually live aboard. It's close to 20 to 25% in some marinas. Yeah. Much higher than I thought. Right. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. <laughs> but fun. Well, is, will there be signs, you know, no discharge zone? I mean, that's, that's part of it. Absolutely that's part yeah. of it. Yeah, I think that's a really important part of it yeah. is, uh, yeah. you know, before it makes people, it's a kind of, it's a behavior changing. It's not like just education, it's behavior changing, which is part of education. So, um, you know, it even helps with trash in the water. Um, we have, when we get those signs up, that's what it's shown to do. So a lot of them will be down, you know, at City Dock and also at the marinas and other places. Yeah. Hello, do you have something to say about that? Yeah, no, I just want to jump in because um, when we uh, sail north, there on the map, on our charts, it'll say no discharge zone as we're entering Newport or Chatham or Situate. It's clearly marked no discharge. And so that is an important designation to have. So when people sail into Annapolis, they'll know automatically that it's a no discharge zone. That's part of the public education, but you're right, signs will be important mm -hmm. at all, like if it's Annapolis City Marina, at the Yacht Basin, and then of course the Harbor Master is gonna mention it to, every, to anyone who comes and picks up a mooring ball. They'll say, here's how, you know, you have to pay this fee, and then the pump out boat is at this number, and we expect you to pump out, pump out while you're here in our waters. Mm -hmm. Is it on GPS? Or it is. It's GPS. It's yeah. everything, yeah. Cool. So it's great, yeah. So when you see this big hole around Annapolis, you think, oh, there's a place we can dump, and that's not, you know. Great. That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, we, we might, I know John could probably figure it out and yeah. get back to us on what is the best way to get that. I mean, we have to um, pass the law first, you know, so it, there's some time, there's lead time there because the EPA review of the application is gonna take a while, but we'll figure it out by then, but that is a good question. Mm -hmm. I just wanted, wanna get a word in here. So if we're gonna be doing signs and things like that, I think it would be lovely if we had a sign on an ego alley someplace that instead of saying, no, don't do this, no, don't do that. How about a welcome to Annapolis, you know, <laughs> sailing capital, proudly a no discharge, discharge zone, zone. Yeah. you know, something, because right now there is nothing there that welcomes boaters. That's a great idea, yeah. So we just combine that positive message. Right. Yeah. I think for the record, we're, we need to table it for today, but we need to have a discussion about um, because Ross and I actually haven't had the time to discuss it on the, the drop anchor boats, the liverboards that just drop anchor, and 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 I mean, there's different philosophies, and and what the residents want is not in my DNA. I'm not going to tell. We're the sailing capital, you know. We don't want to say no, but and I also feel like there is a lot of enforcement, and I'm hoping that you know there's trust with the residents that that the enforcement will you know, help address their concerns, but as Ross knows, there's just a lot of pushback and, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would just love it if the first contact about this kind of stuff wasn't somebody with a badge, you know? Um, I think that for the, like in the, toward the end of summer when the cruisers come here and then, the, you know, they go to the boat show and then they head south, it would be lovely if there were, I don't know, some kind of a marine welcome wagon you know, to explain what the rules are in our harbor. I, I know this is pie in the sky, no, no, no. but we'll, we'll, yeah. have a, we'll have a Creek ambassador program. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and we need somebody who speaks French. There are yeah. a lot of French yeah. uh, boaters, so, yeah. you know, just a thought for, yeah. for the committee you're on. Yeah. We need to um, have form the Annapolis Armada, and that can be one of their jobs. Yeah, everyone will take turns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Don't I would- <laughs> I would volunteer that if um, Beth knows the liverboard that might be violating the, you know, the regulations now in some of these marinas, you're right, it would be really horrible if somebody came with an enforcement, you know, title and started beating up on them. Maybe we can just start a discussion somehow. I'm not sure. It's Ward 1 and Ward 8, so mm -hmm. maybe we can do coffee with your alderman 
and just get them, urge them to come and talk to to you about what, well, it's Ward 7 too, right? Anyone with water. Um, what do we do if we, we don't have holding tanks, we live aboard, what are your suggestions? And maybe there can be a case-by-case -case solution, because I can't imagine that there are that many liver boards that are, you know, discharging into our waters in their marinas. You can't? I can't imagine that they aren't all doing it. No. Oh. No. Well, we can find out from Beth. Yeah, we'll, we'll do yeah. some research on that, but I, I think you're right. So, yeah, that so in New England, they used to have a tablet when you came in, they would put it in your tank and that was declared unconstitutional but it doesn't stop us from dropping something in the water near their boat mm -hmm. that would show mm -hmm. pollution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I didn't mean to segue into this, but the, the, from on the Ward 1 um, side, the, the, there are the street end parks, um, uh, Amos Garrett, Lafayette, and the residents feel like they are using the, the parks as their marina and, you know, and, and that's, just gets very gray area. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, what, whatever we can do on the AEC, we're happy to try to work with you to help the residents understand and maybe yeah. reach out to some of the liver boards. But I also mm -hmm. want to thank all three of you for making sure the funding for the education component of the No Discharge Zone application happened. Because I know that was very, very complicated and contentious budget. So thanks for hanging in there and making sure it stayed. Thank you. Everybody and Mr. Murphy. Yeah, uh, I don't want to ruin the lovely view of the three of us came back here. Uh, and it's not a Paul Murphy motorbike or a question. So Paul, Paul, can you go up to you the You have to come up for the mic. And you and have to ruin. And no, and I think we need to tell Paul what the um for the good of the not for the good but the budget ad. He, I'd like to tell him about the the um. Yeah, cleaning the, the, the cleaning uh, city dock. The marine trash collectors are funded. He'll be very interested in that. Good, good. Yeah. And yeah. My dog will be even happier. So thank you. Uh, I just wanted to interject shortly in regards to what Diane and Elvia were speaking of. A couple of years ago, I walked around with Kurt Regal when he first got on this trail of NDZ, and I would like to think most boaters want to do the right thing. I, it's, whatever percentage of bad apples there is, it's hopefully small. But my point is, as all these things you're talking about, we want to make it easier for people to do the right things. And one simple thing I looked at, when you pull up to the mooring bottle, right, and they give you a receipt, on the back, somewhere in there, in about the same size print as everything else, is a notice about, you know, here's the pump out boat, call channel, whatever, whatever the procedures are. But, you know, like, does anyone really read the all the paragraphs on the back of a parking ticket or any other government piece. So it ought to just be larger, bolder, clearer, more signage on the pump out boats and all the things you're talking about. Just, I, I'm hesitant to mandate it, but I definitely want to make it as easy as possible for people to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And some of that, I don't care if, you know, a few mooring balls are painted with it or some so signage somewhere or at the, at the city dock when you pull in, there can be a little sign, cost you 50 bucks in the last five years. You know, call this number for pump out and just make it easier for people to do the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. you. should talk to the harbor master. <laughs> All I can think of is, what, what is his name, Bob? Wait, is the one that's writing the legislation? He presented to us and his alternate name for the no discharge zone. I won't repeat it here. Oh, yes. I don't give him the signage responsibility. <laughs> don't blank where you. <laughs> oh, is the don't pee in our pool one, but stronger language? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, if he had his way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving right along, uh, how's our uh, just how's our little uh, vacuum cleaner to pick up the the leaves in the fall? We'll talk about it yeah, another time. Yeah, the budget discussion is over. It, we need to do the rotating parking. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I'll entertain a motion to move we adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You don't all have right. to go back to work, do you? <laughs>